Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Bear League Project, how the heck are you? We have Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch with us today. Now, if you've checked out the Oppenheimer Ranch Project on YouTube, you know there's some great reports updated on the Grand Solar Minimum. We have Diamond from Oppenheimer. Thank you for, oh uh, yeah, my goodness, there's like double echo there. So, really excited for the opportunity. Um, what I'm not as excited about, though, is these confirming reports of multiple pole shifts, as well as some information that Diamond brought up off the air that I'm going to let him share on the air, which is, uh, I mean, it definitely brings up some red flags in my mind based upon this Adam and Eve essay that was classified for a lot of years. Well, he brought up some information to that. And do you think there could be some truth to thousand mile an hour winds, to pole shifts, to all the catastrophes that are described in the Adam and Eve essay. I'll leave a link in the video description box if you want to read it yourself. You can download the PDF for free. So on that note, though, let me throw out some good news for you. So we've got Thanksgiving just around the corner, and I teamed up with Noble Gold Investments, and they're giving out free coins right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to give away a couple of free coins today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give away a couple free coins. This is a Morgan this is a Morgan silver dollar. This is a lightly circulated Morgan silver dollar from 1884. Back in the day, that's what they were using. A lot of these were melted down. So there's not a whole lot of these left. I'm going to give one of these away today with Noble Gold Investments. And even later, a Trump coin, a limited Trump coin, we're going to give one, one of these away as well. Now, if you do want to get one and if you don't win one tonight, just go to trumpcoin2020.com. Use the code Leak Project for a $5 discount. And if you go to historic silver coins historic silver coins.com use the code leak project you'll get a five dollar discount now these have a 54 dollar value this morgan silver dollar has a 54 dollar value so you're going to win one tonight folks hopefully it'll be you all right diamond there's a lot going on right now you're flashing lights in my eyes i feel like i'm getting abducted by extraterrestrials you can see the double flash you've got the leak project limited edition mk2 cap i've only got a few of these left and then they're gone forever so then we got the MK3s coming out. But Diamond, you shared some information with me today, and I want to bring up these white papers. Let me show this real quick. I think that this is pretty powerful. Let me just pull this out. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Will you just look at it? Right here, what you were looking at is oh. a pole shift. Tell us about this. What are we looking at here? No. Nah. Well, this paper just came out the other day, right? And it, it talks about true polar wander. Okay, that's the title. Now, this is groundbreaking. And many of the people out there watch Suspicious Observers. Even Ben Davidson made a quick comment on this paper this morning where he said, I am so glad I wasn't alive to see that. And the reason he says that is because something like polar wander that we're looking at here where the, the north rotational pole shifts 30 degrees is unimaginable because what we know is that it doesn't happen gradually. The way that that would happen is either the earth gets perturbed by an object, meaning something hits the earth, boom, which would be catastrophic or the crust moves. And this paper is kind of proving true polar wander that the crustal motion changed or there was a catastrophic pole shift. They don't really insinuate it was an impact, but what they insinuate is they look at the motion along a hot spot, i.e. Hawaii Islands, and determine that there was a period when there was no movement on that hot spot. Now, what that means is that the plate tectonic theory, quote unquote, isn't really working out because if there are periods in time, Rex, where the crust isn't moving laterally, then the plate tectonic theory, which has to, if you have a subduction zone in one spot or a divergence zone at a mid-ocean ridge, this is a dynamic system. There always has to be crust either diving under or moving apart in the system. You can't just stop plate tectonics. But according to the paper, the hot spot under Hawaii didn't move for millions of years, which leads you to question the plate tectonic theory. It also, what it shows is that the North Pole was once in Alaska. 
which is 30 degrees south of where it is now. This is not the magnetic pole, which is shifting right now before our very lives. This is a much more significant pole. This is the pole that we rotate on that wobbles every 26,000 years as the processional top. Now, at some point in the last cycle, the cross, this pole moved 30 degrees. That, that would be a wrap for 60% of all land mammals, everything standing on the surface. If you were out in a field, you would get hit by stuff. It would be an insane reworking of climate systems, the surface of the earth, things would move around. It's unimaginable what would happen. Because what would happen if that happened is that the bulge of the ocean at the equator would shift 30 degrees. That bulge is like 16 miles wide. The earth is 16 miles wider at the equator than it is if you go from the north to the south pole. So if you move the north rotational pole, 30 degrees, a 16 mile wide bulge of ocean would rotate 30 degrees. I mean, that is like a six mile high wall of water hitting a continent if it was in the way. It would be unimaginable. So that's basically what this paper is saying, which is a lot to absorb. And now we can layer on all the esoteric stuff. Well, I want to jump in because- so when I try to yeah, thank you. And we've got just a little bit of a delay here, folks, because Diamond is in an area that is kind of off grid. So I'm just excited that he's even got internet. So, but here's what's interesting when I'm reading through that article, I mean, it's bringing up stuff from 12 million years ago, 3.2 million years ago, but it's not bringing up what happened about 3,500 years ago. It's not bringing up what happened over the past 70,000 years. Now I think we should go through a timeline of events that Chan Thomas actually discussed in the Adam and Eve essay. So I think that that's really important because if we talk about that and we can connect some of these dots with these timelines and then also show the scientific data to back up what he discussed. And then you also brought up something how you feel that they made that information classified for a while. Now it's declassified, obviously, but they made it classified for a while. And you, you talked about the dots. So let's go there, man. This is incredible. Let's get schooled. Diamond came on. He said, Rex, get ready to have your mind blown. So are you, let's go, let's go back uh, and let me just share this uh, screen here. More. Okay. Here we are. Let's share this. Uh, so this is where it's all coming from here. Hypothetically, based on megalithic information, Rex, the Adam and Eve story by Chan Thomas, the paper that just came out, um, some videos by an awesome dude on YouTube that he put out back in 2014, CFAPS has a video on the equator here. And because basically uh, the person who pointed this out was Charles Hapgood back in the 40s. Now, Charles Hapgood realized that the Nazca lines pointed over to the other side of the earth over at Angkor Wat, another megalithic ancient unexplainable site back then. And he said, well, what if that was like they were the poles or something? But it turns out they were both on the equator and it was a way for ancient cultures that lived on the equator, because where else would you live where it's warm? to actually make a projection of the earth and start mapping the earth. Now, this could be 20,000 years ago, Rex. And the Pira Reese map was a piece of evidence they were using. This is a 500-year-old nautical map that was supposedly drawn from much older maps from Egypt, which shows Antarctica ice-free. And only recently, through satellite data, and remote sensing, were we able to actually see the shore of Antarctica and it matches exactly perfect, which means <laughs> that the people 500 years ago were drawing off of a map where people a very long time ago were boating up to Antarctica because it was ice free. Because watch, what happens if you follow the equator south here past the tip of Africa, Rex. Do you know what's just south of the tip of Africa, Rex? 
What? Antarctica. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. So, so, yeah. So that's the setup. Okay. Now let's ch- talk about Charles Hapgood and the history. <clears throat> now, Charles Hapgood, um, where are we? <laughs> Stick with me. We're still, are we sharing this? You're still sharing this. What is this? Okay, good. So this is the uh, information on Hapgood. Charles Hapgood was at Springfield College as a student. Uh, A student questioned him about Moo or Atlantis. And that prompted the class to do a project and investigate the lost continent of Atlantis. This is back in the 40s, Rex. And it led Charles Hapgood to investigate yeah, I'm so, we're still listening. Tell us more about Charles Hathgood. I'm just showing this in, in the background. Please continue. I can't. I was reading it. <laughs> oh, you were actually reading it from that screen? Oh, man. All right. So, so just open it up on your screen, but don't share it. Ladies and gentlemen, True Polar Wanderer. You've probably heard of them before. We've got to throw some curveballs out for Diamond here just to make things exciting. No, Rex is scared about uh, copyright strikes, yeah. and rightfully he should be... Sh- he should be. Now, uh, so here's the cool thing. In 1958, Hapgood finally published Earth's Shifting Crust. And this is after that uh, study he did with his class. <clears throat> and it denied the existence of continental drift or the plate tectonic theory. And guess who did the forward, Rex? Guess who agreed to do the forward in 1958 to this book? Franklin Roosevelt? Albert Albert Einstein. So that leads to a lot of credibility for Hapgood because Albert Einstein wrote the foreword to Earth's shifting crust, which denied the existence of continental drift, denied the existence of the plate tectonic theory. And at the same time, do you know who Albert Einstein put all of his money behind moments before he died? Emmanuel Velikovsky. After decades of Einstein denying Velikovsky's work, the information was coming in from satellites and he picked up Worlds in Collision and read it one more time. And Einstein shook his head and he said, Velikovsky is right. And then he wrote the foreword to Hapgood's book because it's basically a follow up to Velikovsky's catastrophic geology, right? So Einstein knew as early as 1958, that plate tectonics was nonsense, that catastrophism was true, that the planets recently in Earth's history were in a much different place, and that the narrative we're being fed is BS. He, in fact, did the 58 forward in Hapgood's book. Now, Hapgood, listen to Hapgood's uh, history before this book is written. Now, he worked for Theodore Roosevelt, initially, right before, uh, during the Great Depression, which is kind of interesting. Uh, And he was one of the first people who were employed at the Office of Strategic Services, which then became the CIA. So he was one of the pre-employees of the CIA, who then, Rex, in 1965, made this book classified. Seven years later, the CIA classified the Adam and Eve story. Now, why? Because if you read The Path of the Pole in Charles Hapgood's book, it does not talk about the insane things that are in this book, about the winds and about everyone turning into liquid and flying through, getting sucked up into the vortex. He just talked about the geology and the geography. So then the Adam and Eve story follows up on what actually happened recently in our past. And Hapgood knew it was true. Einstein knew it was true. And they all are working with the CIA. And so they made sure that the public did not get to see that in uh, large quantities. Because people were starting to believe in Velikovsky. They literally shut off the catastrophism around 1960. And we didn't hear a word from it until now where it's coming back through the Thunderbolts project, through Rex Baird, Diamond, and other people who are picking up what was put down decades ago. It's amazing. 
Let me jump in here real quick. I want to show this. Uh, this is actually just going to give you a diagram of what Chan Thomas believes happens every several thousand years, where there is a release of gray matter inside of the core of the earth, which then causes these tectonic plates to move, which causes, you know, volcanic activity, tsunamis, causes so much volcanic activity. In fact, that many places, unless you're at an elevation of up to 10,000 feet, you might have volcanoes coming underneath your, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, look at this. It's 2012 all over again. Where's all this magma coming from? The film 2012, I feel got a big part of their, their data from this actual essay. And when you read through it, he's got a 70,000 year timeline approximately. Actually, it goes back four and a half billion years. But if you read through this, uh, there's a timeline of about 30,000 to set. I've, is it 30? I'll, I'll show you here in a minute. I think it's up to 70,000 years of cataclysms. And every several thousand years, there's somewhat of a reset. Um, okay, right here. This is what I wanted to show you. This is going to give you the diagram of where the North Polar eras were. You can see right here, the Arctic Ocean, the Sudan Basin, the Hudson Bay, the Caspian, the Caspian Sea and Wisconsin. So Wisconsin, 35,000 years ago, was the North Pole. I mean, so it's pretty wild. And then if you read through this, he goes on to talk about how one of the, uh, was it, I think it's Vishna or, or Krishna that has gone through 10 cataclysms or uh, was, was around 10 cataclysms ago. My apologies. Very interesting essay. Definitely recommend reading this. And uh, there's a lot to be brought to the table with this. Now, with this being said, Let's think about these cataclysms that take place every several thousand years. Did they have nuclear reactors before there was a reset several thousand years ago? Did they have everything hooked up to electricity? I mean, what is it going to be like next time? Are we prepared for it? I certainly hope so. I hope it doesn't happen, but why was it classified? And you brought up some very important information on that. Please continue. Well, why was it classified? That's a good question. Um, is it to is it the same reason that they're allowing the global warming narrative to continue um, because it's setting good policy and it's allowing politicians to control the masses? It's allowing your uh, hard earned money to be extracted from you and to be set into the coffers of the elites. Is it just a narrative? Because if people believed in the Adam and Eve essay by Chan Thomas, would they still go to work? Rex, would they now know what, based on historical information, that back in the 1800s there were major crop losses and 30% of Europe starved to death? Would people still go to work? Would they still believe that there's going to be food in uh, their fresh grocer? Because if you listen to Ag Daily, who came out this year with some startling information they basically concluded based on historical agricultural cycles the next five years there's going to be massive famines localized and people are going to starve to death and then the guy interviewing him is here is like what does that mean he's like well it means there'll be food scarcity and people starving <laughs> what do you mean what does that mean so the reality is in plain sight the crop losses are going to continue to mount and and people are claiming that we're coming out of solar cycle 24 there are videos on youtube that are saying there's some new uh, sunspots higher in the la latitude on the sun and we're coming out of solar the grand solar minimum is over here's the problem with that what, what they're saying the solar minimum of cycle 24 is not over we can have reverse polarity cycles above the center of the sun up to two years out before the minimum. The minimum is not predicted to happen until the winter of 2019, 2020, which is about 14 months from now. That's my prediction for the end of solar cycle 24, 14 months from now. NOAA's forecasted 10 centimeter flux and sunspot numbers are predicted to decrease and then increase slightly towards June and then fall off the map towards 2019, 2020. So just like there's no linear global warming, there's no linear sun cycle. If you look at a solar cycle, it has blips, hops and valleys. In fact, the solar cycle 24 that we're in now, which kicked off the grand solar minimum, the second peak was higher than the first peak. And that's how we knew that we were entering a grand solar minimum. A grand solar minimum is not a three-year solar minimum. It is a 40 
to 150 year period, which consists of four to 12 complete solar cycles. So it's not a single cycle. It is a group of cycles that form the minimum. Solar max was solar cycle 2019 or solar cycle 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. That was solar max. It lasted for 57 years. The grand solar minimum starts now and last through solar cycle 25, 26, 27. I don't think people get that. The grand solar minimum doesn't end until you're dead. I guarantee it. And if we are on the sea level fall surface, we're talking about the end of the interglacial. So it never ends. It becomes a glacial period that extends for the next 12,500 years. So a lot of people are thinking that a grand solar minimum is only a few years. It's decades. The shortest grand minima ever was 40 years in the last 5,000 years. So the minimum it could be is 40 years starting now. And I don't think many people are going to outlive that. So at the minimum, the next, and, and Zarkova is calling for a super grand solar minimum based on the canceling out of the magnetic fields, which will be deeper and colder and longer than any grand minima that we know about. Going back to the Oort minimum, this is back to 1100 BC, Rex. So I, I just wish people would get their facts straight about what this grand solar minimum means, what a solar cycle is, and stop passing off uh, salacious information that we're all going to be saved. Solar cycle 25 is going to start. It doesn't matter when solar cycle 25 starts. We're just entering the grand minimum. Solar cycle 25 is completely within the grand minimum. And so is solar cycle 26. So a lot of misinformation out there. Nothing is going to get better as the stock market collapses before your very eyes, so will the food shortages. And it's like a rollout. It's like a cacophony of events that layer. And eventually the layers are so deep they can't pull out the lower layers and no one can catch up. Prices continue to rise. Have you been to the supermarket? I was trying to buy some preps. I can't find olives for less than $1.50 a can. That's double what they were a year ago. It is, and it's right before your very eyes. Go look at the prices. Start stocking up now. This stuff is about to go up, up, and away as the stock market goes down, down, and down, and your dollars shrivel away. I just read uh, from some of the smartest people in the last 12 hours are writing that cash is king for the next 12 months. Withdraw all your money from your bank accounts, your 401ks, your IRAs, because if you just hold the cash under your couch, you will make more money than any other way investing for the next year. Well, I Do not in be in a market because they will suck it dry. Go ahead. Let me jump in on that real quick because I've, I've thought that before too. I remember in 2000, I had like five thousand dollars to my yeah. name in the bank. I had been saving up. You know, I was, I mean, I was, a, I was a young buck back then. I was working. I was, I was selling appliances and big screens. You know, I just got married and living, living the life, working sixteen hour, twelve to sixteen, no, twelve to sixteen hour days. But it was just insane. And to make a long story short, I remember two thousand was like, dude, take your money out, take your money out, take your money out. I took five grand out. I didn't have hardly anything in the bank. But if everybody took their money out of the bank. That would be a great way to immediately just collapse the, the, you know, the economic system. There isn't enough money at the banks. Go to the banks and try and withdraw all your money. If you've got a little bit of money in there, good luck with that. So I don't necessarily think that's the solution. However, I think that having cash on hand is a great idea. And if you've been looking at the stock market, like today, it took a $530 hit. Also, Bitcoin's been taking huge hits. You know what I did today, folks? I actually bought more Bitcoin. It dropped down to like 4,300 bucks. I said, you know what? I'm going to pick up some Bitcoin because it looks like a good buy to me in my opinion. So I bought some, but I'll tell you what, I think that, uh, I think that we just need to diversify. We need to have food. We need to have water, water filtration yeah. systems. We need to have books. We need to have uh, knowledge. We need to know what we're doing. We need to be prepared, not scared. Cash is usually king, but if everybody took their money out, yeah. then would cash be worth anything? Yeah. What are your thoughts? I 
I actually did, I did some research on uh, global cannabis stocks today because it's legal in Canada and they, a lot of them were taking a hit and that's where I put money in. These cannabis stocks were at yearly lows. Some of them are only five months old and they're at all time lows. So I have a couple of dollars. I just, just like you bought Bitcoin, I bought some more Litecoin today too. <laughs> 300 and Litecoin got me six or 12 Litecoins because I've never seen it at $42. So the one thing that I worry about is people taking their whole worth and putting it into something that is not really what you should be doing. Diversify. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think cash is- Exactly. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Anybody, like somebody just made a comment in here real quick for those out there. I think this is kind of funny. Dr. Mike says, Rex, don't push people into investment opportunities. I ain't pushing anybody into anything. Uh, people have the right to do what they want. And <laughs> don't push people into business opportunities. Um, this is a alternative news channel, entertainment. And if people want to take those opportunities, they can. Uh, when I want to take an opportunity, I'll take advantage of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your advice. Go ahead, Diamond. Sorry, some people just really make me excited. They make my day. Like that guy. I had to charge up the hat. <laughs> now, so do you want to been like told, you talk constant, about hat cuts some more? Yeah, I recommend for anyone out there preparing right now, and if they're confused about what they're doing and they want to diversify, take a 30 year money right now and buy a piece of land, one acre, quarter acre, 10 acres, whatever you can afford, buy it in the most rural area, far away from everyone. And that could be your starting point. I mean, we're talking, there's acres out here for a thousand bucks. You can even buy land in Aspen Springs for 250 down 250 a month for three years and you get an acre. And you can live on it immediately for 250 down. This isn't the only place that that's true, Rex. And you know about Aspen Springs. It's the Wild West. Everyone's got your back. You can homestead and dig a well and do whatever you want as long as you stay to yourself and don't put up giant balloons. So there are lots of places you can get started. And I think that the biggest thing you need to diversify right now is your sense of well-being. And that's a place to go to in case something happens, a rural place where you have a cachet, where you can be safe away from people, grow your own food and start a new life because that time is coming. We, it's been hundreds of years where everything has been nice and quiet. It's the longest period between catastrophes there. The time, the clock is ticking. It's like tick tock, tick tock. People are playing video games when they should be reading about growing food you know, we kind of stopped doing fun stuff. All the fun stuff we do is directly related to us excelling in the future. It's not uh, taking away from our preparedness. It's preparing us for what's coming. Like we're about to go to the witness in the desert. We're basically going out in the middle of nowhere where there are no resources. And we're going to live stream YouTube in the middle of nowhere where there's no food, no water, no electricity. But we're going to do it. Because we need those skills for the future. Absolutely. And I would like for those that are listening to the podcast right now, we've got over a thousand people watching. I want to thank everybody for being here. And I would also like to give out one of these coins now. I'd like to give out a, let's, let's go ahead and do the, let's do the Trump coin first. And then we'll, we'll do the silver uh, Morgan coin. This is a limited Trump coin. Uh, these are limited. Did I say these are limited? And they're also very controversial. And, you know, it's silver. So if you would like to make a guess right now from one to a thousand, from one to a thousand, if you get closest to the number or if you get the number right, you are going to win this coin. And then I will send your information. You'll have to send me your information for your address at leakproject.gmail.com. I will send that to Noble Gold Investments and they will send you a Trump coin. And did I say that this is limited? And also, did I say that if you don't get the free one, but you want one, you'll get a $5 discount if you go to trumpcoin2020.com. This does have, I think, a $45 value, a $45 or $50 value. So make sure to get the discount and get the free coin. So start guessing numbers, folks. And I put in the chat box, I put in the chat box, the first number that you need to get. So I put three numbers in there, but we're just guessing the first one right now. Diamond is witness here. You see it, Diamond? 
He's shaking his head. Yes. Okay. So go ahead, folks. The first person. I see that gets the numbers. It. Okay. We've got 1,046 people here right now. And they're, whoa, look at that. Look at that. Go, look at it. Go. We just look at it. We just, it just it's flying. Oh, turn on my chest. Yes, but, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner and we had a winner fast. Holy cow. How did you get that right? I'm the space monkey. It's a good, easy one. The, no, wait, no, wait. Paula, Paula Brodsky got it before. Paula got it before. Wow, Paula, you are fast. Um, Paula got the number, was the first one to get the number, which is, nope, June got, oh my goodness. And then Joe, no, Joe guessed 7-7. Seven, seven. So June, I'm still rolling up and I'm still, there's a whole bunch of people that got this number. Milky Way got it first. Okay, the first person to guess, it was the one, two, three, five numbers down and you can go back and see for yourselves, folks. Milky Way won the coin. Milky Way, that was very impressive. Send me your um, send me an email, leakproject at gmail.com, and we will get you one of these Trump coins in the mail. So great job, Milky Way. Wow, Milky that was Way. fast. I'm going to confirm that. Milky Way, did you pick 777? <laughs> Holy cow. Ladies and gentlemen. So that was great, man. That was awesome. All right. So uh, amazing. And, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's opinions and, you know, I have opinions. I don't have advice. I have opinions. I can talk about my own stories and what I do. So please, uh, you know, don't think that I'm giving advice. And if you want to listen to what I have to say, if it resonates with you, great. If it doesn't, you know, hey, that's cool. I get it. It's totally cool. And Mike, I think you're awesome. Dr. Mike, I think you're amazing. I was just kind of poking fun at you. Today has been one of those days that I woke up and I started going through the comment section and all day, it's just been like, I don't know if the trolls are just, just some wicked comments and stuff that I... I don't even prefer to talk about. It's just really disturbing. It's like, you know, you, you, you let somebody come on your program and you don't agree with them. And then you, you give them the respect to come on your program. And then they go off making all these weird claims and just bizarre stuff. And it's just, it's disturbing. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But anyway, so, all right, you got the first one. And thank you for hearing my rant. Uh, I feel better now. I, I, was, I was ranting to Diamond early. He's like, okay, dude, just go outside get some fresh air, you know, go out, you know, there is outside, Rex, you're in Colorado, you go outside, you can look at the beautiful skies, I'm in here, I'm like, oh my gosh, all these people, man, what is wrong with people, it's like, could you imagine being at a dinner table with people saying the stuff that they say in the chat room, I mean, could you imagine the kind of, it's like, dude, what kind of people are out there that say this kind of stuff, they're just, I'm just gonna say something nasty about this guy, because he blocked me earlier, so I'm gonna make up a new, I'm gonna make up a new screen name, and say really nasty stuff about him, that I don't know anything about, but I was gonna say it anyway, because it sounds good, ah, I mean, come on, like, don't we have enough stuff to worry about? Like, isn't there enough division? So why don't we work on the real problems out there? Like maybe preparing for the grand solar minimum, preparing for these crazy situations. And uh, anyway, so I'm divagating. One thing I find interesting, Diamond, we'll close it out soon. I know you got a lot going on here, but we do have a couple more coins to give away. Uh, the Elon Musk interview and tweet where there was a research essay that came out, hundreds of artificial intelligence programmers came out and said that they think that AI is gonna be better than humans at basically everything within the next 30 to 60 years. He comes out and says, ah, I'm gonna up that and say maybe by 2030. And I don't disagree with him. Ray Kurzweil came out and said the same thing. By about 2035, you're gonna have the singularity where computers are doing much greater feats than humanity as far as just their processing power and their conscious abilities. So maybe this is what I think. I think that the MFers, I think that certain people that have enough money are doing their best to live through this, to be able to make it through whatever cataclysm is presenting itself. And if that's gonna be with nanotechnologies, if that's gonna be with artificial intelligence, if that's gonna be with uploading their consciousness to the cloud, whatever they can do, they're gonna do it. And I kind of see why they're pushing so much for this new being of artificial intelligence that will eventually take over humanity if we continue to let it go unchecked, or maybe it's already too late. What are your thoughts on that? Wow, the gremlins are kicking in. Are you still there, Rex? Can you hear me? Yeah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Yeah, so, um, I, you know, regardless if Adam and Eve is correct and the essay by Chan Thomas or Charles Hapgood, um, as a geologist, I have no evidence that there is a crustal slip on the time frame that we're at. 
I think that that may happen every 26,500 years. And that happened already, we know, 12,900 years ago. So we're not in that time frame, but we are in a catastrophic climatic shift. And they know because this has happened according to the work that I studied for the last 500 million years. Regularly, every 11.5, every half cycle, the, sec- the place we're living, it's happened. And it's the sea level fall surface. Sea level falls now 300 feet in the period of about a thousand years. The only way to explain that would be to put it up on a glacier. But more and more information is coming out that actually the spreading of the earth might cause huge fracturing at mid-ocean ridges that drink up the ocean. Um, And this paper just came out last week up to, and they're estimating that three times more water could be drunk up by underwater volcanoes than ever thought before. And there could also be voids in the earth. Now, the cosmic ray flux we're experiencing could be swelling the Earth. That's my prediction. It's my theory. There are others that believe it. I'm not the first one to think it. But based on the scientific data, and then we go back to the Chan Thomas. What do they call it? The black goo? What do they call that stuff? The gray matter? It's So the gray matter that comes out of Earth, um, I know that. It's called eclogite. So mantle material, all the material, once you get down at depth below the crust, not only is it filled with diamonds, but it also has garnets and olivine. And it's called eclogite. The mantle is um, is a rock and it's called eclogite. And if you were to see it, it looks like gray matter. It's nondescript, greenish gray. It looks like an elephant poop. But it's filled with diamonds and garnets, so it's much more awesome than that. But I can see that leaking out or coming out on the surface in massive quantities. We have evidence of that here in central Colorado. They're called kimberlite dikes. Now, these dikes are diamondiferous. There are diamond mines around them. De Beers owns many of them. And they're right in central Colorado in the mountains that are volcanic where everyone's skiing. Some of them are only five feet in diameter. Now, listen to this story coming out from mainstream geology and what I was taught, that these five-foot tubes go, five-foot tubes, five-foot wide, go to the center of the earth. And they erupted from the center of the earth out into space at almost 15 miles per second. It's the only way they could have cooled as quickly as they did. And, and form the diamonds that are in these kimberlite pipes. So can you imagine a five-foot-wide volcanic eruption coming out of your front yard that erupts up towards Mars? That, that story's insane. <laughs> but that's what I was taught, and that's how kimberlites are formed. Go ahead. What, else is, what else is insane is when it talks about how when these events happen, there are winds that actually go, the, the, the wind will be, uh, up to a thousand miles per hour, there will be tidal waves up to ten thousand feet in height, and they go across entire continents, and then they freeze. So you have entire cities that go underwater for X amount of hours, then they freeze, and then over several months, the water starts to dissipate, and it discusses how these poles move. The same amount of ice, the same amount of water, but it just goes to a different place, and these hectic situations. Now, here's the good news. I've had Cliff High on the, uh, Cliff High on the program, and he's going to come back on again. And he says that the data is based upon a smaller Earth. And he talks about the expanding Earth hypothesis. When the sun gets smaller and the connection of the sun and the Earth and the magnetosphere, et cetera, the Earth actually gets bigger, the sun gets smaller. And if a catastrophe does happen because of the extra land mass, it's not going to be as extreme as, and deadly as some of these past cataclysms. What are your thoughts? And then we'll close out here soon. And I want to thank everybody for, no, we're going to, oh, wait, here real quick. I guess somebody said that Pete got the number 777 first. So I didn't see it. Pete, send me an email. I'll take care of you too. I'm going to take care of Milky Way because I told him I would as well. And uh, we will definitely honor that. So we're, we're going to give away one more coin tonight. Um, before we do though, I just want to see if, if Diamond wants to add anything to this. And I want to say thank you very much. Legendary Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch. The paleontologist. Thanks for having me, Rex. Absolutely. Um, you know, the, the changing earth size hypothesis, um, 
that needs a lot of work. I mean, there needs to be a lot of information on it. If the sun and the earth are connected, which we know we're magnetically connected, we're electrically connected, that there is definitely a relationship. Now, there's something that many people fail to realize, and I want to impart this in everyone. Just like, so someone was asked recently, if the CO2 hypothesis is so wrong, well, why is CO2 going up perfectly gradually nonstop? And it's because the answer is right in your face. The CO2 has been increasing since 1880 regularly because there's a 300 year lag time on CO2. And if you go back three, 500 years ago, it was warmer. So the, the medieval warming is now being shown on the surface coming out of the ocean as the CO2 rise that they're now using to lie to you. So they're actually using the CO2 lag time from the last time earth warmed to tell you that it's your fault that the earth is warming. Everything has a lag time. So if the sun shrinks, the earth is not going to shrink that day. There is a lag time in all systems. Earth systems don't move that quickly. Whatever is in the cards for our future is already in place. There's no way you could stop it. There's no way you can stop climate change. It doesn't matter how much CO2 you make right now. If we make a billion tons a second, the Earth's equilibrium would not allow it in our atmosphere. The oceans would gobble it up. It would maintain the equilibrium that's necessary for Earth to exist now. There can only be the amount of gases in our atmosphere now that can be there now. If you put more in of something, it would go be absorbed somewhere else. It is a system, a system that many people fail to realize the scope and scale of it. And there's no way that atmospheric scrubbing or CO2, uh, <laughs> all that is nonsense. And it would do nothing except rob plants of food. I mean, it's insane. We live in an insane world. I call it opposite world. I opted out a few years ago. I recommend everyone do the same. Learn to be self-sufficient. There are millions of people doing the same thing that you and I, Rex, are, are preparing for. And that's to be more self-sufficient, more self-reliant on our own systems because the powers that be clearly are not going to be here to save us because they've been lying to us. The amount of lies we've uncovered in just the last few years is mind boggling. And, and we've only just, you know, uncovered the surface. So uh, one there's more, only more to uncover. One more thing. This is like one of the biggest things that I don't even think we covered. You brought up these megaliths and how they're all linked up to one location and how C Fat or what was his name? CPAC or something like that. Hapgood. Charles Hapgood. No, 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 no. See, uh, the the YouTube guy that did the YouTube video about it. Oh, CPAPs. CPAPs. Yes, yes CPAPs. CPAPs. Back in uh, 2014. <clears throat> now, what he did was he simply drew a line around all the megaliths and Oyan Tambo and Anchor Wat and Nazca and Cairo. This line, the ancient equator at 12.5, actually lines up directly to the middle pyramid in the, of the three pyramids, the Pyramid of Cheops. It lines up directly on the side of it. Go look at his video. Link it, I have it linked in last night's uh, video. You can link it below. But we're going to try to get him on. I invited him onto the show tonight. Um, he's got other videos about megalithic structures and esoteric information. Now, this all goes back to earlier work, the work of Hapgood and Crustal Shift, and specifically, um, God, the work in 1972 by uh, Hamlet's Mill. That book uncovered the procession of the equinoxes and all other types of advanced mathematics at Anchor Watt like the number of statues that go down the entryway corresponded exactly to 26, uh, 26,500 years. The procession of the equinox is embedded in Anchor Wat. Now, if Anchor Wat is on that ancient equator with Nazca, then they did it there. And they were telling us about the procession of the equinoxes because they were telling us every 26,500 years, the equator shifts, you idiots. And here's where the equator was last time. So we now know where the equator was last time. And still people are like this. 
Oh my God, look, they all line up in a line. That's a coincidence. That doesn't mean anything, Rex. And then this paper comes out the other day that says that the, a mantle plume squished out of the earth, just like the gray matter, caused the earth to wobble out of control and shift did the poll. So all of this esoteric information, the Chan Thomas book, Charles Hapgood, all the information, when you look at it all from a distance, it all is the same story about the very facts of the world that you live in that you were never taught about. And it is a dynamic world of catastrophe. And we may be living through the next one. We don't all die. We make it. And those that are aware that it's about to happen won't rip their face off. We'll go into a tunnel. We'll hide underground. We'll come out the next day and the sun will come up again and we'll plant food and everything will be okay. I get Eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Ladies and gentlemen, that sounded terrible, but it was meant to. And, um, you know, it's funny because I'm reading through these comments and now a bunch of people are like, no, I was the first one to put that number. No, I was the first one to put that number. No, I was the first. Look, I went back and actually those were at the same time uh, the, as far as the, the minute. So, no, you weren't the first. But, hey, good try. Good try. And, you know, what? I think maybe I need to change it up then. Maybe I should do something like I've got one coin left to give away. We've got two coins that I'm going to give one to uh, Pete, one to well, Milky Way. You're sending me emails with your addresses so I can get them out to Noble Gold. I've got one coin left to give away, but instead of guessing numbers, this is what I want to see. I want you to write down real quick, just, just in one or two sentences in the live chat, how you're being the change you want to see. Write it down real quick, and we're going to give it a, you know, maybe a minute or so here, and then we've got one extra coin. I figure that's better than guessing a number, right? That's, that, I mean... Why not, you know, make your mind think for a minute. Just create something really good here. So I'm going to look through the live chat and let's see what we got. And Diamond is looking also, and he's got the 5G protection on with the tinfoil hat. Ladies and gentlemen, a tinfoil hat. It is a leak. Pro look at, wait a second. Look at that. He's showing it right now. You can see the liner that's actually built into it. A liner built into it that blocks 5G up to 30 gigahertz. We just look at it. And I'm going to give away one of those at LeakCon. LeakCon 2019 in Denver. Be there or you will be square. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right, we're looking here. We're looking here. I'm reading, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let me, let me share some of these with you. Let me share some of these with you. And um, I want to get your take on this real quick too, Diamond. <clears throat> so, what do we got here? Spreading the truth. X Legion. Right on. You're spreading the truth. What's the truth? Um, Mark, being the change I want to see is no chemtrails. That's good. That's good. And now how are you going to do that though? In a win-win situation, how are you going to get them to actually listen to you? Cause they're not listening to anybody else. It's a really big industry right now. Um, all my interactions with other people. Let's see. The earth is alive. Yeah. Do you see anything that looks good? Are you looking through this diamond? Gorilla. Yeah, garden. I like lighting the fire from within. That's good. That's good. Um, someone says loving my children. That's a good one. Absolutely. You need to do that. I would hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Um, let's see what else we got here. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's good. Uh, you have a self-sustainable backyard farm. Let's see. Um, purging completely down to my guitar. That's good. Someone started meditating daily. I wish I could give coins to all of you guys. I wish I could, but I don't have that much money. Um, <laughs> I'm spending all my money on coins and I'm giving them out to everybody who listens to Leak Project. Okay, you know what? <laughs> oh, man, I, I can't reward you for that one, zombie. That wouldn't be good. Um, let's see here. You know what? I think that uh, Diamond will let Diamond pick this one. Diamond, you're picking it, man, because you're a legend. <laughs> I'm going to go right with Violet Moore. Violet, M-O-H-R. Violet, M-O-H-R. Homeschooling her children. Number one thing you can do to stop uh, them infiltrating your children without you knowing you're busy all day at work. Um, and, and a lot of people don't have time to talk to their kids and they're being indoctrinated at these public schools. They're being raped at Catholic schools by priests, maybe who knows, but I, I know for the first time out here in the mountains, I know homeschoolers, their children, they don't curse. They're the most well-behaved at every age. They knew about the grand solar minimum. Global warming was a fraud. 
all youngsters are geniuses. Homeschooling is the number one thing you can do to be the change because you're teaching the younger generation the truth. You're not letting them get indoctrinated. They won't be, there's not a lot of peer pressure where they got to play video games and be dressed fancy. The kids I know in this valley, they don't care what they have on as long as they have pants on. And that is the way that you can live for today and enjoy nature and the universe the way it was meant to be. You're living to love and nurture. You're not living to, I don't know, accumulate. The problem is the materialistic world, Rex. Our consciousness is eternal and, it, and our brain is an antenna. You've been here before. So... The most important thing you can do is love everything around you and everyone. That's the purpose. Have you ever been in a situation where everyone was loving and it was terrible? <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, it's a no brainer. So homeschool your kids and don't beat them. I was beaten as a child and, the, C and the, the CDC is just coming out. Oh, it's bad to beat your kids. And people are like, what are you talking about? I love beating kids. You got to beat them. No, 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 you don't. Because I guarantee if you hit someone else, that will affect them for the rest of their life. And thankfully for someone like me, it allowed me to rise up to where I am now. So... I'm at a level of happiness where when I wake up, seeing the sunshine and breathing air brings joy to me. I've never been able to experience that ever until recently. And it's because of the trials and tribulations I lived through <clears throat> and the beautiful place I now exist in, free from the mind control, because Rex gave me this hat. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Plus, I got a pretty, yeah. I like the Mohawk. You know, I, I like that. I'm actually going, you know, people like Rex, man. Oh my goodness. You know, you, you've got a, you, you've got, you know, you've got a hairline. Well, I, I've had this, I'm going to show it off, you know, cause I've, I've had this hairline now for like 10 years. Okay. I'm proud of it. I think it's great. I enjoy it. And actually it, I, I shave it. I shave this part of it so that I can think more. It's, it's like, it allows me to think better. You know, I'm a thinker. So, uh, yeah. so I, I, I'm thinking about doing the gel matrix style. I'm just going to puff it all out. And uh, and Ozzy Stern will come on and, and make fun of the, uh, the the forehead. I'll have Ozzy Stern come on the program. Do they so. know that we're we're in our forties? We're in our forties. We're not like teenagers. I, I don't know, man. So they're, they're, like this is all the hair something. I have. Yeah, My so. hair like, just look at it. I love it. So I went to a mohawk. <laughs> Dude, I like that. I think that's pretty cool. Can I do a mohawk with this? If I just like, I could I could have it like this. Yeah, I could do the ultimate well, comb over. You could one of those Hare Krishnas in the back. Do the ultimate comb over. Ponytail. Oh yeah, <laughs> big ponytail. This is totally protecting me from five G. This is the ultimate comb over. Future podcast. Rex Berry gets trolled I'm by Ozzy. Trying Ozzie to Sturge. put my hat on you. Oh yeah. You see me putting? Look, I'm putting my hat over on you. Thanks, brother. <laughs> All right, everybody. We navigated for a little bit, but I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody. Be excellent to each other be the change you want to see. Make sure to get me those emails so I can get you those coins sent out with Noble Gold Investments.